Welcome back to Dream Daddy. As per usual, you guys know the drill by now. Give me one second to make sure my audio is straight. And we will get started. Now, last we left off, it was moving day. still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone. So I'm just going to pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go this way. Alright, cool. Okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance. Could it be? A big burnt out neon sign hangs above a tiny dive bar. Gym and cams, huh? Alright, that'll do. Bar small and dimly lit. The crack of Balls. Sounds in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover over the bartender. Above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. What'll it be? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. Bar the bartender slides me an ice cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, uh, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh, I awkwardly turned my attention to the game, which is playing in one of the TV stone walls. Let's look what happened. My team of preference is not only playing, it's currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. <coughs> the brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. <laughs> Several people in this bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike. Although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is, in all, oh. is all in good fun. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass slides up to this bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. <coughs> hey, sailor. Oh, uh, hello. Hmm. It's good to see fresh meat in here. Uh, no, I actually just moved into this part of town today. I'm a reptar, by the way. Mm. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead, and if they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Oh. oh, I love that team. I also love that game. I also love someone who knows their way around balls. The fuck is this? I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Mm? drink. Should we buy Mary a drink? Yeah, okay. Should we buy Mary a drink? Or should we not buy Mary? reluctantly sing, signal the bartender to order Mary another glass of wine. Neil just Neil chokes back and forth with Mary. They're clearly friends and this clearly isn't her first time doing this. She tips her glass at me. Suppose I gotta keep you company now. Hey. So what do you wanna know? Uh, hmm. What's your deal? Me? I'm a ghost reptor. I will haunt the hollow halls of Jim and Kim's waiting for my beloved to return from sea. Really? No. Mm -hmm. Homegirl just loves a drink. That's fucking rough. 
So what else can you tell yeah. me about this part of town? It's quiet, that's for sure. You want an idyllic little life, the white picket fences. This is the place to do it. But almost every town has its secrets, you know. <coughs> she takes a sip of her drink. It was a little too ominous for my taste. She leans oh. closer. Would you like to have some of my secrets? Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, maybe some other Come time. On. Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. Happily watch the game over another beer, the game has gotten close in terms of points. A little too close than what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points with the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my, in my opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win-loss record, I'd say that my team is superior. That's where you're wrong. Since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective close, with both sides playing their hardest to win. But in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripples around the bar. I raise a respectful glass to the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us based on mutual love for the game. Most of the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey and the man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. Thanks! I'm a reptile. God, I gave him the goofiest fucking name to run around and hit on these slutty little dads. There. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yeah. Robert chuckles. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or a Kim that runs there. this place? No, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the hall. <laughs> Guy Neil, not enough Neils in this world. Okay. You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink most things. You like shots? Ooh, shots fired! I don't like them. Um, man, it depends on the shot. I have a friend who's really bad about pouring drinks. She has a. Um, she has trouble with her kidneys and with her, like, with her liver. So if she drinks too much, she gets really, really sick uh, for, like, days on end. But she loves to pour drinks, and her favorite thing to do is to make a drink with Everclear. For those of you who don't know Everclear, it's low-key gasoline. And she'll take a sip and she'll be like, I know what's wrong with it. It's got too much gas in it. And then she'll give it to me. And that is how I spent 12 hours drunk one night. I love shots. Thank God. <laughs> Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Huh. Here's to your health. We take the shots, so the whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Man, I look like I belong at Weenie Hut Juniors. What do you mean, look tough? I look like a fucking punk possum. I'm nothing. Oh. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Going to Weenie Hut Juniors? <laughs> Alright, Reptar. This guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Oh, you stupid, stupid band. Um. Um. I could compliment his cool leather jacket, or his rugged good looks, or his hand tattoo. I don't think complimenting his hand tattoo is gonna go well. A man like this has tattoos for a reason. And they're usually reminders, and they're usually not good reminders. I feel like he doesn't fucking care about his good looks. But I mean, a man like that doesn't wear a leather jacket unless he loves that leather jacket. I like, I like your jacket. Thanks, been in my family a long time. Passed down from firstborn to firstborn. Cursed, some would say. Man, this guy's mysterious I... and cool. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? Um, uh, we 
could be truthful and say that, like, our daughter kicked us out because Amanda did kick us out. We could say that we're running from our problems. Or that we're trying to make friends. Hmm. Let's do running from our problems. The usual. I like your style. He gets up. Oh. Be right back. Got a powder in my nose. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Ha. <laughs> I guess so. I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. A guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Buddy. We look like we belong at fucking Weenie Hut Jr. We couldn't go to the salty saloon. Spittoon? Yeah. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go home. You headed my way. Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished unpacking today. I forgot that I dressed him in the gayest way possible. Jesus Christ. Hey. Great place to meet. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house. Just a few houses away from mine. We stop mm. and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, Riptar. Huh. So are we doing this, or what? What? Hey. You know, you want to come inside, or not? A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. Are we going to, like, sleep with Robert, or no? Are we going to sleep with Robert, or no? Because from what I understand, if we sleep with Robert right now, we cannot romance Robert. So I guess my question is, do we want to romance Robert? I think there's potential to want to come back and romance Robert, so I'm going to say no thank you. Ah, uh, I'd better call it a night, catch you mm. around? Sure. I head home, head buzzing with whiskey. What do you mean by, are we going to do this or not? Plop down on the couch and I'm asleep before I even get the chance to take off my shoes. Dad tip number 45. What? Do what you love and the money will come. I wake up to a text from an unknown number. Rise and shine, early bird! You still wanna work out? This is Craig, BTW. Holy crap! It's 6am! Who does 6am anymore? Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Whoops, must have winked back out. I check my phone again. Hey bud, still wanna get your swole on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. God. <laughs> the last thing I want to do right now is work out. But it is Craig. I do want to catch up. Oh, you were going to the gym. Hey, my man. I need a few minutes to wake up. But let's meet in 20. <laughs> oh, God. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing. Meet me at the gym. I stretch my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep on the couch. Throw off my blanket and... Nah, wait, I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. Mana must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless the child. I reluctantly brush my teeth and throw on the only clothes I own that are even kind of gym appropriate and head out. The neighborhood is quiet and serene this early in the morning. Birds chirp and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing. Out front stretching. Of course he spots me and waves enthusiastically. I'm so sorry. Oh. Hey, bro. Good morning. Hey, it's good to see you, man. I'm definitely not as pumped as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee oh. before I left. I'm ready to kick some butt. <laughs> I feel like help is the choice. This is it. This is how I die. Oh no. Uh, it'll be alright, dude. We'll ease you into it. Dude. We head to the gym, and I'm immediately intimidated. All of these people look like they could break me in half. And it seems like Craig is friends with oh. all of them? High fives and fingers guns, all of the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money and spend it on protein shakes. Nice. Come on, bud. Let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent pace to be walking. So, 
So, I know mm -hmm. we are in treadmills. Yeah. And those over there are ellipticals. Mm -hmm. Very good. What is all this other stuff? <laughs> Bro. Craig laughs. They might look a little scary, but I guarantee you all of them serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. I watched the dude in a muscle teeth flex a muscle I didn't know existed on a machine. I think was once used to process green into flour. What is that? What is that guy doing to himself? That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? Um, training to crush people's skulls with his thigh, using a medieval torture device, praying to some sort of pain god. I feel like training to crush people's skulls with his thighs is a vibe. He's he's trying to make his thighs so strong he could crush people's skulls with them. Dude. Yeah, that's pretty much the only reason I work out. <laughs> Oh no, Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. We got eggplants. Ooh. How, uh, how long have you been doing this buff thing? Huh. Couple years. And what do you do when you're not dadding or working or buffing? Oh, I coach my twin softball team. That still counts as both the dadding and buffing. Ah, uh, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? I love learning. I try to live my life as close to Jimmy Buffett's song as possible. I check out my hot pod. Uh, okay, I do not check out my hot pod because as much as I enjoy the body that like I was gifted with, um, for the most part. I do also look like a busted can of biscuits 95% of the time. And not that there's anything wrong with looking like, you know, a bag of baked beans. But I do not always check out my hot bot. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do the Jimmy Buffett song. The goal is to live with as few worries as I can muster. The lost shaker of salt was a metaphor. Hmm. A metaphor about what? About not being able to shake salt onto something. Mm. We're jogging now. Oh god, we're jogging now. Look over to Craig who hasn't broken a sweat. What's he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying. I could feel my life force straining through my every orifice. Mm. Hey, remember when my fish died in college? <sighs> no! I don't like this story! <laughs> God, he's really pumping up the speed again. So I better do it too. Oh, this is fast. This oh. is very fast. We were at that party and you vowed to make me feel better. You tell me to create you tell me to create a distraction, so of course I do a sick lit cake stand, get everyone cheering, and then I uh, I try to steal a fish from the fish tank of the party with my bare hands like an idiot. Bro. And then you drop the fish and it's flopping around and you panic, so you run right up to me post cake stand, the dying dirty fish in your hands and you've scooped off the ground, and you're yelling at me that we have to leave? What the fuck is Bro. this? So we're running out of a frat party with a fish trying to give him mouth to mouth resuscitation, we get him home, and we get him into a bowl of water, but the prognosis was grim? And the next day he's uh, alive and well. Dude. They never did catch the great fish thieves of Grand Ridge U. And they never will. I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Jesus, that hurts. Dude. Dude, bro, are you okay? Craig offers me a hand and looks me over for injuries. Okay. I'm fantastic. I managed to stand up and rub my back. It doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure oh, it will later. Man. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits, bro. Well, I think I might call our gym adventure hmm. here. You sure? Yeah. Oh. Alright, well, here. I brought you this. For hands me a shaker bottle full of thick green liquid. I stare at it with what must be apparent hmm. distaste. It's a protein shake, bro. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> he wants me to drink it. Oh boy. Here goes. Take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Wow, this is really good. Hey. 
And good for you. It's my special recipe. I'm pretty proud of it. Hey! Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood if treadmills aren't your speed. No pun intended, bro. Good one. Well, I'm gonna put some ice in this everything. See you around. I can't believe we fucking did a tumble. Did a rumble tumble in front of the hot gym, bro. We can never be a gym rat. I leave the gym feeling ashamed. Craig used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm. And now he can run circles around me. Literally. Man, I've really got to work on this dad bod. I get home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god. I'm so old. Oh. Oh no. I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Shoot. It's 3.55. Supposed to be at Amanda's school in five minutes. I need to pull on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. I'm not having a good day. There's always time for a beer with your buds, though. I arrive at Amanda's school and check the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. Check my watch and relieved to see that I'm only two minutes away. Late. Wait. It's room 103 or 108. I spot a youth standing by his locker. Approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? Youth turns around and looks me up and down with a heavily lined eyes. <sighs> Come on, kid. I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Mr. Vega. Right, the exit? Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? Ugh, fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss it. I don't know why I'm giving everybody like a nasty Valley Bro accent, but it sucks. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vegas' class anywhere. After a couple minutes I go, I, of searching, I head back downstairs. The, you, the punk you sent me on a wild goose chase. Get back to where low rent Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his mm -hmm. locker. Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? <sighs> Fine, Mr. Thinga. Mm -hmm. Wow! Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not mm -hmm. cool. We must be Reptar. The period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Hmm. Mr. Vega leads me in, and I take a seat at one of the comically small student desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Oh. All right. Where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreal, the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? Um. Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to oh. make a fart noise. The whole class erupts oh. with laughter. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Ah. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break huh? at the door. Remember to do the reading and answer the response question on the page 194 of your textbook. Nobody's listening. Hmm. Or not. I guess. Mr. Vega turns hmm. to me sides. Middle school is right. Don't you teach high schoolers? Eh. Both, you know. Budget cuts. Right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem. Mr. Vega. Hmm. Please, call me Hugo. <laughs> I sure will, sir. Look at that. Look at them. Look at that tweed. Oh, what a bow tie. Very on brand. Oh. Eh. I don't normally do these impromptu parent teacher meetings. I'm sure you know Amanda's a very bright student. I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Hmm. Amanda has never been the most engaged student. But I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments. Been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chuck this up to senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. Hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I just wanted to ask. Is everything okay at home? Um, we just moved. She's fine. She has a tendency to bottle things up. 
Well, she's obviously not fine because she's like fucking around and she's like acting out of character. Uh, I know that as a teenager, I had a tendency to bottle things up and just like be a fucking problem. But also, move a move can be very challenging, especially when you're about to go to college. So to move, unpack, and then move again. It's got to be super stressful. Well, we just moved recently. It's only on the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Oh. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal, and would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road. <sighs> I know how important art school is to her, but I would hate to see her miss out on the scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, ah. Hugo. Anytime. My way out of stop. Thinking for a moment, I turned to Hugo. Hey, Hugo? Oh. Yes. Did they ever catch, they ever catch that ride? Mm -hmm. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. So a little bit of truck that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force of positivity in, our, in my life. Especially after we lost her father. Amanda must be done with classes for the day now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home. Maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about your celebrity crushes. So, you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? It was a very productive yeah. meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Uh, I feel like going to the mall would be a good way to like get her off kilter. That way she'd be more inclined to like speak to us. Does that sound good to you? Mm. Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can a dad take his dog mm. to the mall? Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. One. Sounds like a deal to me. Okay. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay. But sometimes it's good to have a parent's perspective, because, you know, sometimes the parents have also dealt with mm -hmm. similar situations. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? <laughs> oh no. Mm -hmm. What? N never mind. Look, sweetie. Mr. Vegas said you haven't been participating in class. That you're not turning things ah. in. Oh. I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. You liked Mr. Faker's <laughs> class. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to the stoplight and I, I, I am in. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to Ugh. me about anything. Uh huh. I can know that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. It's frustrating. Um, I heard Emma R is going to some fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yup. Oh no. Oh, stop talking! Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yup. Hmm. Mina keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. It's so funny. Uh, it's, uh, I don't think you'd get it. Oh, okay. Who are you texting? Yeah. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Huh. Yep. Do you like Noah? Hey. What? No. Oh my god. Dad. Ugh. I can't believe he was. Dad. I mean, jeez. That. Denial is a river in Egypt. Homie. Why would you? Ugh. 
gross. S sorry, sorry, just, just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Uh, guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Ah. Huh? Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Uh, well, good talk. <laughs> Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over to the mall, then. Tan tip number 64. Whistle while you work. We arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple of different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let's eat something disgusting for yeah. dinner. Hell yeah! Language, Missy. Huh? Heck yeah! Better. Hmm. When we approach the food court and evaluate our options, there's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar? Bread with cheese on it? Or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? <laughs> she takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally <laughs> large cheese. Very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. Take a seat at a rickety table what? and dine in. These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely mm -hmm. delicious? We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy our fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. Eh? So? Something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Huh. <sighs> Which meme? All. All memes. Just... Just every single one. Please. Aww. Amanda sighs deeply and places her head down. Ugh. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people. They get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time gets by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all of us users have already done the joke Aww. to Dad. And what's worse than that is movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on a meme train. And just based on how long it takes to make them the meme will be how long it takes to make them the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out so it just dates it and isn't funny oh shit what up dad that was gross <laughs> dad please hmm. anyway changing the subject where to now wanna go to that golf store hmm. what you know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as an anti-establishment despite being the exact representation of the establishment. I I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, where you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on people that fought so hard against the punk and hardcore movements the 70s mm -hmm. and 80s. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. Oh, that one! Yeah! <laughs> Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. Makes a beeline hey. for the bag. Is this... Supposed to be... S no. I think it's supposed to be Hot Topic. Like a generic Hot Topic. There it is. You can still see the puke outline. I'm so... Proud? Speech! Amanda. Ah. Speech! 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 Alright! I'll do it if you stop chanting! Huh. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. Ahem! <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate this historic moment that would have forever shaped history. The day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda and Rexus had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing hmm. to the mall. After begging her father to take her into dead golf and beyond, to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over the display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Huh. Amanda's moved. She begins clapping. 
slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. Hey! Oh, hey, chain wallets! Well, I made a business yourself looking at band t-shirts. Trying to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a den to look at in, dead, in a dead goth and beyond. Um... I have such a mug hoarder. But also, I just bought a Cowboy Bebop shirt. And it's like nasty yellow, so I cut it into a muscle tee. Or we could do the clearance bin. I'm such a thrift store boy. Clearance bin. There's a big cardboard box marked of marked down items. I'm pretty sure $4 for purple eyeliner is a good deal, I think. I wonder if I would look good in purple eyeliner. You don't. Promise. Hell yeah, I went, you're wrong. <laughs> look. This is very important to me. I overhear a stifled argument at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment, showing it to a bored looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that. I don't know what to tell you, dude. I just oh my. Here. Listen, when I bought this online, the website said this blast was clearly Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Alright, do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. Huh. I see. Well, it would seem that I have overstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your supervisors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Whatever, dude. What a choice. Where's my choice? God damn it. The man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they are Victorian inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda drops up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Mm -hmm. Hey, Deadtron 5000? Yes, I'll buy it for oh. you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops the shirt onto the counter and grins at the <laughs> cashier. I love your hair. Oh. Cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? Cashier rolls her eyes so hard. I'm worried she'll pull something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation's over. We make our way out of the store and go home to get some rest. You know what? I have a bone to pick with mother nature today. So spring, like the spring equinox was a couple days ago, right? And why? Why, for the love of God, is it the first day that it's like a moderate temperature? The day, first day that it's not chilly in nature? It's 84 degrees. Why is it 84 degrees today? It is so hot today that I felt the pull of my link. Fucking southern ancestors. And I made sweet tea for the first time in like a year and a half. And I made it like the good U.S. South style. And I put enough sugar in it that you can only balance it out with an insulin shot. But you can't afford an insulin shot because we live in the United States of America. <laughs> Amanda and I sit on the couch trying to find something to watch over our bowls of ice cream. Uh. Oh, cool. Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers is on. Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yeah. They have to make it over the Canadian Tundra before the ice road melts, but also, they're hunting ghosts. <laughs> yeah. Also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint, Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving a ghost hunting duo will find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no! The ghost have done got control of the truck! I can't steer on them there damn ass roads. 
Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Uh, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying you're going to die. That's because we're about to die. <laughs> this is art. The episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go <laughs> to go and start arguments on the internet. Fair. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Caleb and Flint Dogboat after their disastrous ice road incident. Afterward, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Eat a balanced meal every day that includes vegetables, fruit, and protein. Aw, thanks. What a good dad tip. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. My toddler started doing that, by the way. She has started pretending to be asleep. She'll just close her eyes with a silly little smile on her face and she'll go... <laughs> we have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Made is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves in one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. <laughs> So are you excited for the cookout today? Um, excited to beef up my grilling skills. If there's food, I'm excited. Or eh. mm. beef up my grilling skills. I'll see this as a learning opportunity. If I can snake some hot grill tips, I think we can must consider it a success. Mm. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope nobody talks to me. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We'll get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early. Just because you said that. We head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk, we walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Huh? I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through the sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. I set our veggie plate down uh, on a table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over. Arms open wide. <laughs> Welcome! I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies. Oh. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids! Come on over here. This is Chris, oh, yeah. my eldest. Hi. <laughs> this is Christian and Christy. They are twins. Whoa! They stare creepily and say nothing. Oh. And then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Wait, where is Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Mm. Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart. Did you put Krish to bed? Mm? I'll... I'll have to go look for mm. him. What? You'll have to... Yeah. Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Oh. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Reptar. And his daughter, Amanda. Huh? I'd shake your hand. But I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh god, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It takes all of my energy not to run away from this barbecue and start fresh in the new <laughs> city. <laughs> my wife has a beautiful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All of the guys are really excited to meet you. Man, did I mill around to try to find some food spread out on the table? 
and pick at some deviled eggs. I made a crap of a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. <sighs> Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Hmm. Dad. Ugh, they're going to talk about the weather. Ugh. Go. Do it. Go make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child on a social function? That's yeah. bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my do dad. Bye. Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Look, here goes nothing. I look around the party and surprised to see some familiar faces. Is that the barista from the coffee spoon? Ah. Did I meet that guy at the bar? Did that guy throw a frisbee at my noggin? Is that the guy who was throwing a fit in dead goth and beyond? Is that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig! Wait a second, all these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right, I better investigate. Ooh, you better investigate. Um, who should we speak to first? Robert and Brian, Matt, Hugo, and Craig. Miss Pickle, we've discussed the door. Just because you can open it doesn't mean that you should if you are not capable of closing the door. Now I have to get up and close the door, despite the fact that I should not have to. <sighs> if you can't close the door, cat, then don't push it open. Matt, Hugo, or Craig, Joseph, or Damien. Because we're not doing burger time, we gotta go socialize. Um, let's do Matt, Hugo, and Craig. Because those are like Matt and Hugo? Absolutely fucking baby girl. As like my sibling would call um. them. My sibling would fucking bark at these men. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think that it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods not only exist because they are a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of the time and place. And to try and take something like, say, the Rocco period and compare it to postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have like no idea what's happening. We can talk to Craig. Yeah. I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. How did resistance training go the mm. other day? Great! Little River here is a great cheerleader. Aren't you, tiny bro? Craig grabs River's hand and waves them around. Mm -hmm. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for pooping on you. She must be a handful at that nice. age. Oh, they always bro. are. But it's so worth it. Craig grabs River's arms again and wipes uh -huh. them around. Also, I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. Hmm. Are you settling in? Oh, um, almost done. The new place is perfect. I'm not. Dorby, Dabbert. I don't think she needs her help licking your licking her foot. Thank you so much. The new place is perfect. It's actually really cozy and the neighborhood is beautiful. I'm so glad mm. we moved here. Even more glad we're right next to my old best friend. Craig gives me a polite, a playful punch on the shoulder. Ooh! Ow! I remember that hurting less mm -hmm. in the past. Sorry. So sorry. I've been doing like push-ups and stuff. Repta, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's super friendly. It seems like your daughter's fitting in. That's not the voice I gave him. Hold on. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize hey. turns over to us. What is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown? I thought you'd like cute hey. Well, there's only one way to find out. 
Matt takes the flower crown and places it on hey. top of his head. That's fucking adorable. That's so adorable. God. Mm. Just go ahead and kick him my little feetsies. God damn it. <sighs> Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mm, nope. But you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Hey! <laughs> A reptar. This is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmencita. Huh. Mina comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Uh, yeah, actually. Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee spoon? My old Whoa. college friend and uh, your teacher? Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we oh. were neighbors. Yup. You still going to get that overdue turn paper? Dad. <laughs> it was great seeing you. I made a finger guns her way into the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger guns move for me. I'm very proud. Oh. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did sweet my man son go? He says sweet man Chago. Hugo likes her in the party. He was finally spotted because his eyes go wide. Huh? Ernest! Ernest Hemingway Vega! Of course his name is Ernest Hemingway. Are you smoking? Hmm. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. <laughs> nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of a cigarette and then flicks it into a gutter. Um. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, hey. right? Man. I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Nearly burned down half the yard. Oh. And the barbecue we had before that, he like, actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread onto my lawn, and burned down half of my yard too. Hmm. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Um... Hey everybody, sorry about that reptile, this is my son, Ernest. Hello! Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Good talk. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. It's nice to meet you, Ernest. Uh, what grade are you in? Doesn't matter. Oh! Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm I'm in the 8th grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to fucking know. Uh, yeah. Uh, good for you. Hmm. Can I, can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. That's so fucking fair. Oh my god, yeah, that's fucking fair. Ouch. <sighs> Honest. Oh, yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand on the corner. Well, that was, uh, that was certainly something. He seems nice. He puts his head in his hands and eyes. Hmm? So sorry, he's having a really tough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad, and he clearly resents oh. me for it. Uh, I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher... That's just about as authoritarian as you can get, right? Hmm. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm as cool as the cucumber! Hey. <sighs> See? That right there. You, you can't say that. I don't know. <sighs> like, my kids... My kids think I'm cool, bro. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? Oh. I, uh... I don't know. Oh! I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine we once raised against to accept our fate to unironically wear socks or sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. 
Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. Hmm. I yell across the yard to my daughter, Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs and keeps laughing. I, I see your point. Um. As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be the cool dad as it is to be a cool dad. And we can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me, oh. Ernest. My job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Mm. Yeah, you're, you're right. But it, it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well. There might come a time when we won't be like that. Is, is college when that happens? Ah. Don't let us eat up your time, Riptar. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Alright, so I think that I'm going to leave this one here for right now. And in the next episode, we'll talk to Robert and Brian and Joseph and Damien. Um, but till next time, I am that one plant guy. I will see you guys tomorrow for God of War. Um, and I might come back to this on Thursday. I tried to do Minecraft on Thursday, as you guys can see, but I'm not really great at survival mode. I'm very much a just blow it up and build shit. I'm very much a creative mode ass boy. The survival aspect of Minecraft doesn't appeal to me very much. It's the reason why I play games like Animal Crossing and things like that where I can do all of the like stuff that I want without any of the consequences of survivalism. But I will see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.